Why do we ride coasters? Is it for bragging rights? Or for the adrenaline? Why would we go out of our way just to go to an amusement park for one new ride? Is it to say you've been on it? Or just for the experience of going back? Today, I'm not going to go over this. But I did just go to a new park for the first time ever. And I'm here to talk about it. Now welcome to RCE Kingston. Today, I just got back from my Atlanta trip. I'm sorry I didn't do any vlogs. I didn't really feel like ruining my experience. So, the way I'm going to make up for it is, I'm going to be doing brief summaries of each ride, of each thing we did, in separate videos. Today, starting off with the first thing we did, Six Flags Over Georgia. And what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be ranking every roller coaster from Six Flags Over Georgia. Now, whenever I say a ride's name, it's, a picture's going to show up right here. And that picture's going to stay there until the next ride comes up. I'm sorry I did not get any off-ride footage. I, I just barely got all the rides in because I was running around trying to get all the credits. And just remember, this list is my opinion. And if you don't agree with something I say, then that's your opinion. Don't come after me in the comments. And if you do have a different opinion, please do put your list in the comments. I would love to read it, and I will reply to every comment I can. Now, without for any further ado, let's get into the video. Now, before this video starts, and I get into the ranking, there was one ride that I did not get to ride because it's closed for the season, and that is the Riddler Mindbender. Now, the reason I did not get to ride this and it's closed for the season is it's getting a repaint. Now, if the reason I'm saying this is because if you're planning to go to Six Flags Over Georgia this year, I just want you to be ready to know that the Mindbender will be closed because it's getting a fresh repaint. It might be opened whenever you're there, but as of 4 11 21, it is not open. Okay, this is Kings from the Future here. There's a little mistake I made. There's only 11 roller coasters at, um, over Georgia, but I thought there was 12 at the time of recording this. So whenever I say at a, like 11th and Tim's place, I actually mean the first ride is 10th place and the second ride is 9th place, not 11th and 10th. So I'll put that on the screen right down here. So the place that that ride is in is going to be right there. So yeah, just wanted to tell you that before the video starts. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Now, at the number 11 spot, we have the Joker Funhouse Coaster. Now, I got one ride on this because it only runs one train. And, you know, this was... Oh, solid family coaster. It was very smooth. It has a rather great, has a rather good layout. And off right, it looks really short from what you can see. But it is actually a rather long ride. Just be ready for this to get one of the longer waits in the park because of the one train only service because it cannot run two trains. There's not really much else to say, except that the best row on this roller coaster is the back row. Now, at the number 10 spot, we have the Dahogany Mine Train. Now, this ride is not the best. I love this ride. It is my favorite mine train I've been on out of the Carolina Gold Rusher at Carowinds and Cedar Creek Lime Ride at Cedar Point. This one is the best. But that's not saying much. It's so bad that it's good. There is some serious airtime in the front row on this thing. Now, a little backstory. I went to see I went to Six Flags over Georgia with my cousin, aunt, mom, and younger cousin. Me and my younger cousin, Avery, were on the front row of this ride. And let's just say we got some of the wildest laterals and airtime in the park. 
like the only way to describe this ride is it's so bad that it's sim somewhat good. The transitions are really odd. The airtime is abrupt. And it has terrible pacing. But the finale saves this ride. I only got one ride on this thing because my mom did not let me get another one because we were running short on time. But in the back row, I'd imagine... So the final drop on this ride after the third lift hill, after the third lift hill, you go on the slow turn, 180 degree turn, and then you go into this drop into a tunnel, which is rather thrilling. And there's a like quick transition at the bottom of the tunnel. Well, quick, but it's a quick transition at the bottom of the tunnel, and then you hit the brake run. This ride is fun, but it's not for everybody. So that is. Number 10. So, this next ride on the list might surprise some coaster enthusiasts that have been to Six Flags over Georgia. And this ride is Blue Hawk. Now, I heard mixed things about this ride, but the majority of them have been positive. I've heard it's really intense, the restraints aren't that bad, and the transitions are actually pretty good. So I went in with moderately high expectations. I was thinking this was going to be one of my favorite rides in the park. But it just wasn't. The The first drop was pretty good. In the back row, you get some weird laterals because of the lack of banking at the top. I got two rides on this. One front, one back. But... The drop is okay, but then you get into that um, rare butterfly inversion. And it starts off smooth... But then once you get here, it just jerks. But this track doesn't look rough. It's just, I don't know if the rails aren't aligned properly or what. And then you go to the other side, and it jerks you downwards. And then it's super intense. It pulls four Gs. So the short, the vest restraint, which doesn't really accommodate your shoulders well, like, slams down, so these things are pushing your shoulders down, and you're, like, right here is being pushed down, and then you go into this turn, and that has laterals, but your shoulders are so pushed down that you're just being, like, slammed like that. Then you go into this, like, dive loop, and you go, you're here, and you jerk to the side. And you go down there. And at this point, and the I got my first ride in the back row. My back had been slammed into the seat so many times. Then you turn up. You turn up. Then you go down into the corkscrews. And the transition into the corkscrews are so bad. Then you dive down and turn into the brake run. So at least it's not super long. It's just it's so abrupt. And I got a front row ride with Avery, hoping that it'd be a little bit smoother than the back row. No, I had the exact same problems. It's just a janky old Vacoma. Which is deceivingly smooth looking off ride. So... Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about it. It's just bad. Now we're getting into the rides that are good, but they're not the best. And we have our first B&M on the list. And this is Superman Ultimate Flight. Now, you might be thinking, wait, why is a B&M ranking this low? Well, it's because I only got one ride in the fourth row. So, I did not get the best experience. And this was my first ever flying coaster. So, I didn't know what to expect. So, I didn't have really high expectations. But, it's definitely smooth. It's very smooth. I wanted to get a front row or a back row, but we were waiting for like 50 minutes. And we got assigned the fourth row. But... The drop didn't do much, it just felt like a turn. But the pretzel loop, 
was awesome. Like, the pretzel loop was the best moment of the ride. That lived up to expectations wonderfully. And it was just a great exp element. The rest of the ride didn't feel like much. It didn't really stick with me. It was a turn, it was a helix after the pretzel loop. And then there are two overbank. Yeah, two overbanks into a helix. And then an inline twist into the brakes. So nothing too great. The pretzel loop was the only reason I was riding the ride anyways. It just doesn't warrant really that long of a section. It was fun, but it didn't really do much for me. And that was a real shame. So next up on our list is the Great American Scream Machine. Now this is going to take a lot of people who have ridden it by surprise. Because uh, before I went on it, I have heard... Nothing but the worst about this ride. I heard that it was the roughest wooden roller coaster they've ever people have ever been on. I heard it had no airtime. It was a pointless layout and it was boring. But this ride was awesome. I got a back row ride, and I got so much airtime. And the airtime was weird because it's not just like oh we're floating now because of like the track bumping. You're floating, but you're, like, shuffling and bouncing. It was the weirdest thing ever. Because I can't tell if it was the bumpiness giving me airtime or if it was the actual hills or a combination of both. But it was so much fun. You got some good laterals. And it was just a great classic wooden roller coaster. Sure, it's not the smoothest. It's not for everybody. But... Me, For me, who really likes wooden roller coasters and doesn't mind them being a little bit bumpy, this is a great ride. Now, yeah, sure, it doesn't have the strongest airtime or the best drop or anything like that. And sure, it's not going to be your favorite ride at the park. I just appreciate it for what it is and how old the ride is and it's still running that good. So that is this entry on the list. Now, next up on my list is Daredevil Dive. Now, Daredevil Dive was the biggest disappointment of the trip to Six Flags because I had such high expectations for my first ever Eurofighter model and just didn't deliver because I'd seen pictures, I'd seen POVs of it, and I thought it was going to be a fun ride that was rather intense, but it really didn't do anything. All it did, the all it did that was go was the final heartline roll, because you got some weird airtime. But other than that, the drop was trimmed. First inversion didn't really feel like much. Second inversion didn't feel like much. And then the second half just has bad pacing. Like, the drop was so badly trimmed that the whenever you crested it, whenever you crested top of the left hill, and you could feel the train starting to pick up speed, then you hit the trim, and it slowed it down to an absolute crawl. And then you started picking up speed down the drop, and it killed any airtime you would have gotten. And because of the short trains and, like, bad capacity, I ended up waiting, like, 30 minutes for this thing. And I ended up just getting disappointment. So it wasn't really that great of a ride. Now, this next ride on our list is a complete opposite from Daredevil Dive. This was the biggest surprise of the trip. And this is Batman the Ride. Now, I've heard a lot of mixed things about this ride. And everyone says that it was intense. But I did not think it would be so intense that whenever he hit the brake run, every time, my vision was like blurred and I felt dizzy. That's how intense this ride is. And I didn't know how strong the laterals would be. But for a little while, I thought I liked this more than Goliath. Like, that's how wild this ride was. And the farther you get into the layout, the better it gets. And this is a very unpopular opinion. But I like this better than Raptor at Cedar Point. 
It's not better than uh, Afterburner's Carolyn's, but I like the Batman, the ride at Six Flags Over Georgia more than Raptor at Cedar Point. And this is like 30 feet shorter and almost 2,000 feet of track shorter. And a lot of people give this thing like a hard time because it's cloned everywhere. I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of riding this ride at different Six Flags parks because it's just so good. Now, this ride is just intense and the zero g roll and corkscrews give wild laterals like the laterals on batman the ride are crazier than any wooden coaster i've ever been on and it's better than any these are the strongest laterals i've ever felt on a roller coaster i don't know b and m invert it is wild the vertical loops are the perfect shape. And then the twister section of the ride, there is no second to breathe. I got two rides on this thing, both in the back row. And, like, every time I we hit the brake run, my vision was f almost fully blacked out. And I was like, extremely dizzy it was wild this thing took me by surprise it is the best there's the second best being a midvert i've been on okay so this next place is going to be the most unpopular opinion in this video and my third place roller coaster is twisted cyclone now, this ride is widely considered even either the first or second best roller coaster in the park. But, you know, I just, I love this ride. It's actually my two cousins' favorite roller coaster, Avery and Addie. You know Addie from the um, YouTube video DDLC with Addie. And you've not met Avery, I'll probably put, like, a picture, like, here or something. I don't know. But, I just didn't really think it lived up to the hype. It was awesome. Don't get me wrong. I got two back row rides. One in the second the back row and the other in the very back row. And, yes, it was absolutely fantastic. The airtime on this thing is wild. But, it just didn't really live up to my expectations as much as I had hoped. But it's still a phenomenal ride. It's just a little bit short for my liking, but it doesn't feel short on ride. It's just... I don't know. It looks great off-ride, but I think it was just the experience of the other two rides that just... The other two rides ahead of it. That just made them a little bit better. Okay, coaster enthusiasts. Pull out your pitchforks. Come at me. Here's my address. Right here. Right of my eyes. Come find me. And then take me out. But my number two in the park <laughs> is Georgia Scorcher. The B&M stand-up roller coaster. Yes. A stand-up coaster is my number two roller coaster in the park, ahead of an RMC hybrid coaster. Yes, I do rank a stand-up coaster ahead of Daredevil Dive. <sighs> Just shut up. The reason why this is so high is because the only other stand-up coasters I've been on is Vortex at Carolyn's. And if you know about that ride, you know it's terrible. So I came in with the lowest expectations ever. Expecting it to be just the same as Vortex. And it just blew me away. Now the first ride I got on this was a back row ride with my mom. And that was one of, if not the greatest ride 
I've ever gotten on a roller coaster. Just because it was both our first time, neither of us had seen anything about the ride. And we got the best row on the coaster, back row. And whenever the ride was over, we both looked at each other and was just like, and dumbfounded because we did not expect that much from a stand-up coaster. And then I got another great ride with Addy as the last ride of the night in the back row. Sunset ride, 8 p.m., last train of the night on Georgia Scorcher with Addy. Both of us on each side. I was in seat one, Addy was in seat four. Back row, nighttime, last train of the night. And I don't think I had laughed so hard on a roller coaster before. This was just a great experience. I don't think any ride will have such a sentimental value to me. Ever. It was just wonderful. And I think I have the fondest memories from Georgia Scorcher out of all the rides from Six Flags out over Georgia. And that's why it's my number two in the park. Georgia Scorcher. And we've made it to my number one roller coaster in Six Flags over Georgia. And overall, my number one roller coaster. And that is Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia. Yes, Goliath is my number one roller coaster ever. I rank it over Steel Vengeance. I rank it over Fury 325. This ride is perfect to me because it's not gimmicky at all. It's just a solid ride with great airtime. This is the ride at Six Flags over Georgia that I rode the most. I got four back row rides, one front row ride, and one ride in row five. That front row ride and those four back row rides will stick with me for a while. This was the first ride I rode, and it was one of the last rides I rode. For most of the day, it was a walk-on. I think the longest I waited for it was 10 minutes. This ride just has so much airtime. I'm not going to go too in-depth on it, because there's a separate review coming out soon for, of, for Goliath and Georgia Scorcher. There's a review coming out for all the rides in the top five on this list. But I am going to be doing an updated version of my top 10 now that I've been on 70, 57 roller coasters. And yeah, that is my top 10 roller, that's ranking all the roller coasters at Six Flags Over Georgia. I highly recommend this park. It is great. And it has solidified itself as my third favorite park I've ever been to over Universal Studios and Out of Adventure. Just behind Cedar Point and Carolyn's. And yeah, if you made it this far, don't forget to leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe because I make content like this rather often. And I also do quite a few, quite a bit of gaming content and other roller coaster related things. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.